welcome to the end of your free masterclass. What have we gone through? We've learned how to research and find images to create your products. We've learned the interface. We've learned what programs you can use. The UI of Cinema 4D. How to create a basic CAM product using splines. Uh, UV mapping and all kinds of tips and tricks along the way to help adjust and fix little errors which I created during the process, which is very common. The last thing we're going to do is now your bonus tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to create a lighting setup for you to render your beautiful new product. So the first thing we're going to do is just set up our camera. So we're going to toggle around here until we find a layout that we like. We're going to select this button here. It's standard. It's going to lock a scene. Click this square over there and that's going to keep you in your scene. Now while you're in there, you can go to the coordinates here and just make sure everything is straight. Zero, zero, zero. And then if you want to just use these to adjust to the very center, this little point is the center. So it helps lining up if you've got a symmetrical artwork like I've got here. These coordinates don't, to be, don't need to be so precise as long as it looks good here. The next thing we're going to do is create a light. So I'm going to start with an area light. What I'm going to do is right click on the area light, go to animation tags and select target. In the target object section here, I'm going to drop subdivision surface and subdivision surface is the most central object I've got. So this is the center. That's close enough for lighting purposes. And that just means that now when we select our area light here, it's always going to follow the center. It doesn't matter where you go. It's always following the center. Now let's jump out of the camera so we can see what we're doing here. We can zoom out. So you can either manually move your light to be where you want it to, or you can use some preset coordinates that I've already figured out. So I'm going to set this at minus 1000, 250 on the Y, minus 500 on the Z. And then I'm going to go into the object section here. I'm going to lower this all the way down to one, which is the intensity. Then I am going to change the size of my object. So X is going to be 500 and the Y, we want it to be really tall to create these nice lines. So that's going to be 1000. The next thing I'm going to do is create is change the spread here. Now the spread is just adjusting the softness of your light. If you've got a high detailed light, maybe with a silhouette of leaves, you would set that to zero or something close to zero. So you can see the leaves. If you wanted it to be more blurred, it would be one. So to make this a more defined line, I'm going to change this to 0.5 and let's have a quick look. So what I'm going to do here is go click window RS render view. And that's going to bring up our render view. So all I have to do is hit play. Now we'll select our camera. So we're in the right angle. Now that we're looking here, you can see there is a line on the side, which is exactly what I was trying to create. Now the trick to creating nice lighting is just to do it one at a time and slowly build it up. So because I want this to be a fairly symmetrical lighting setup, I'm just going to duplicate this area light by holding control and dragging it down. And then I'm going to go into the coordinates here and change this from minus 1000 to plus 1000. And now we have two nice streaks on the side of our can. And if we turn on subdivision surface, they go up a little bit more and it smoothens out all of our geometry here. All right, the next thing we're going to do is create some edge lighting, get a nice little edge around there and, and really bring out our object. So I'm just going to duplicate these two area lights because it's going to be the same. While I've got them highlighted, I'm going to go to the Z section here and change it to minus 1000. Oh, sorry, minus 2000. Or is it plus 2000? There we go. Plus 2000. So now you can see that there is a bit of edge lighting here. If you want to make the edge lighting a little bit taller, while having both of them selected, you can adjust this. So you can see in the viewport, the lights are getting taller. So you can manually make them taller if you like. Let's just put in a number like. 2000 that's pretty good maybe 
3,000. It doesn't do much of a difference. Let's leave it at 3,000. And the next thing we're going to create now is going to be the background. So I'm just going to pause this render for a second for those of you on slower machines. I also want to create a fill. So let's create a bit of a fill dome light here. So let's turn this back on. Now the dome light's going to be a little bit overwhelming. So I turned it down to 0.5 just so we get a bit of a fill and we can also see these highlights here. Another thing you can do to further bring out those highlights, these front ones are a little bit dull. So I'm just going to select the first two area lights, which are the ones facing here and here. And then I can either go into intensity and crank that up, but that turns off the whole, the whole brightness. Or you can go into details and you can individually turn up some sections. So I want to turn the reflection up, just the reflection up. So if I set that to two, yeah, that looks pretty nice. If you go all the way to four, you can see how it gets very strong. Let's just keep it at two. And that's that. All right. Now, the last thing we're going to do is create a background. So save your, your project where you are. And then we are going to go to this section here with the square and select plane. Now, the plane is automatically going to be in the bottom here. So while that's in the bottom, you can just do this, pull it out. I'm going to put in a value of 2000 and let's put another value of 2000, set these to zero and zero. Then I'm going to select the plane, hit the letter C and what C does is it breaks the plane apart and I'm going to create a curved background. So click this line icon here, select the back line, hold control, and drag this up and now once you've dragged it up you've got a kind of box like a, uh, a photography box but in 3d space the next thing i'm going to do is bevel this box i want it to be a bit of a curve so another tool you can use here select this button and you have all of these deformers here so i'm going to select bevel drop bevel inside the plane and now i'm going to bevel it. So right now it's only using the geometry that exists. So you want to add in a few subdivisions to make it more smooth. So let's put in five and then we can crank this right up to make it more soft. Let's have a quick look at what we've done here. There we go, looking good, but we've lost our edge lighting. All right. So before we get into the edge lighting, let's just rename it edge light one and edge light two just so we know where we are we're going to create a new material so hit this plus button it's going to pop up call it bg for background double click it it's going to bring up your materials again we are just going to make a black background so drop that down to black and drag this onto your plane. Let's have a quick look. Hit the play button. There we go. We've got a black background. Looks okay. Pretty shiny. Um, I, wanted, I think there's a couple of strange lines here. So what I'm going to do is stretch this background out by hitting the letter T while plane is selected and pulling the red section. So you can see now it's kind of smoothing out there and I've got it a little bit too close to the can. So I'm going to push it out in the Z section. So that pushes it back. There we go. So we have kind of a soft edge. Now let's go back to the material and we're going to just adjust this sharpness here. So let's make it, I don't know, Five. Now I've got an even better idea. Why don't we try and match the color of the background? Is it green? Maybe yellow? And we can just go in here, adjust the yellow a bit better. Something more like a product shot. There we go. And I'm going to reduce that. We get a bit of reflection down here. Increase the coat. 
So this is a secondary reflection that we can use. And I'll just blur that a little bit as well. Now we have a background. The only thing that we're missing now is the edge lighting that we created before. Now for this last trick, we just have to select both of our edge lights, go to the project section. We're going to, we are going to drop in the plane. Now you can see the lights here. And if you select these buttons, this will turn off the reflection. This one is the shadow. So just the act of doing that, we've got our reflections back. That's the beauty of working in 3D space. You can do things that aren't possible in reality with the less time. All right, I think that's a pretty good shot there. So to render this out, you just have to select this button up here. If we go to render, then we go click render to picture viewer. And once it's finished, the colors are going to be adjusted. There you go. Oh, hang on. Here we go. Oh, I hate doing that. <laughs>